Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Sitzmann and I am a registered dietitian working for in Bonsante Dietitians, EBS Dietitians for short. So today's topic that I want to talk about is self-esteem. So self-esteem is, if I had to explain it shortly, the self-evaluation we make of our own worth, competence and significance. So as human beings, we tend to place value and worth onto something or onto someone based on certain things. Um, and I don't know if you've ever really gone and sat and intentionally thought about hmm, what, what is my self-esteem like? Then maybe it's good to go and reflect on that. Self-esteem can be positive, negative or balanced and what I specifically want to talk to you about today is where negative self-esteem comes from um, because negative self-esteem can lead to a lot of unhelpful thinking and unhelpful behaviors as well. So a negative self-esteem is if you tend to constantly or often think about yourself in a negative light. So you see yourself, let's say, as a whole, um, very negatively. All right, so that might be thinking constantly, I'm a failure, I'm not good enough, I'm not attractive enough, I'm not this enough. Um, and that tends to stem from some things as well. So I wanna talk a, a little bit more about how negative self-esteem actually develops. Um, and if we think about it, a young child doesn't fully have a self-esteem as of yet or an identity. It is being built up by their parents or their caregivers, um, family, friends, people around them. And that is what gives us confidence or can actually break down our confidence or self-worth. So if we had to look at where negative self-esteem might begin or what can affect negative self-esteem, sometimes um, it can be a byproduct of depression. Um, so when your mood is constantly low and you constantly maybe feel negative emotions like shame or guilt um, or unworthiness, it can stem from that. Maybe it can come from having um, a, a disability um, or maybe coming from a relationship that you are in, maybe a very stressful situation that has been prolonged and just doesn't can, can't seem to get better, maybe financial hardships. So those are all things that can affect it. And then specifically looking at um, where a deeply rooted negative self-esteem can come from is from childhood or from early life experiences. So if you maybe grew up in a house where there was um, abuse or neglect or where there was maybe um, very high expectations from your parents or caregivers that you weren't able to meet. Um, maybe you got the message that you were a nuisance um, or that your needs were sort of bothersome. Um, maybe there were negative comments made towards you. Um, maybe negative comments made towards your weight or to your eating patterns. It could have been your family's um, financial status. Uh, maybe you were at the receiving end of somebody's um, frustration all the time. So there's a lot of things that can come from early life experiences that can negatively affect our self-esteem and, and break us down. And as a young child, you don't necessarily have that ability yet to challenge the conclusions that you might make um, because your full identity is maybe not built up yet. Um, so if we come from those experiences and it might not even be drastic experiences, um, it can literally be something like a tiny comment that somebody made but it deeply affected you as a child um, because certain situations um, and certain negative life experiences can um, cause you to make a conclusion about yourself and 
that conclusion that you make about yourself becomes a core belief that you have about yourself, um, which can be negative. So it can become deeply ingrained into your mind. And because it's not being challenged, we take it as truth and we believe that 100% this is who we are, this is truth. Um, and it can come down to making self-evaluations self about yourself like, I'm a failure, I'm not good enough, I'm unattractive, um, I'm not smart enough, um, nothing, that I ever, nothing that I do will ever be good enough. Um, and at the end of the day, what it all boils down to is... I'm not maybe I'm not good enough I'm inferior and which leads to feeling that I'm unlovable I'm unworthy and I don't really have a lot of significance and I'm not competent and those negative beliefs about ourselves can be really I want to say it can really affect our emotions as well because if we constantly feel horrible about ourselves and that we're not good enough we have no purpose no value then obviously we'll, we will experience emotions like sadness and anger and anxiety and the fear of being rejected so there's a lot of negative emotions that can come from it and deeply affect our mood um, and we will always try and protect ourselves so at the end of the day we're going to put things in place to try and protect ourselves from the truth of our negative core beliefs of our negative self-esteem this leads us to make very unhelpful rules and assumptions for our life and these rules and assumptions are a means to protect yourself all right so um this might be making the rule of i must be perfect in everything that i do or I'm not allowed to make a mistake or I must always look presentable when I go out and if I don't then, I, then I'm going to isolate myself. Um, I must be able to do everything on my own. Um, I must be the best in everything that I do. I must always say the wisest thing. Um, so there's a lot of um, rules that can come from that and it's very high expectations that you set for yourself um, and it's sort of like if you don't meet, meet those expectations you will be rejected and the things that you believe about yourself that are negative will then be true if you won't meet up to those expectations so let's say for example you are able to meet those expectations for a while and you really overwork, you make sure that you're the best at everything, you make sure you do everything perfectly, that doesn't really sort out the problem. It only leaves your negative self-esteem lying dormant. So um, it doesn't really address those negative core beliefs that you have about yourself. And these rules and assumptions that you make for your life are usually, if not always, unattainable. And you're going to eventually get to a place where you feel burnt out, um, stressed because you won't be able to meet it. And the thing is, whenever there's a situation where you're not able to meet those rules and assumptions, that negative self-esteem is going to creep up again. And you're going to feel unworthy, unlovable, all those negative things again. So it's important to actually address the root of those issues, the root of those beliefs. So... I always say that people don't just behave a certain way because they just feel like it. Um, there's usually a reason behind it. Now, our self-esteem or negative self-esteem, I might say, affects our behaviors because these rules and assumptions that we have for ourselves, they project into behaviors and the behaviors are a way to live up to those rules and, and, and assumptions that we have for our life. So let's say, for example, I must always look presentable, um, otherwise I will be rejected. This might lead you to maybe spend a lot of money on your appearance or constantly be on a diet to um, lose weight or improve your body. Um, it might be um, maybe overworking if you tell yourself I must be perfect in everything that I do or I must be an expert in everything that I do it can lead to overworking and eventually burnout 
um, maybe it can lead to things like procrastination um, because you want to put off um, feeling like a failure. So it can lead into a lot of behavioral issues, maybe isolation, withdrawal, um, not taking care of yourself because maybe you don't feel worthy of being taken care of. Um, and a lot of our unhelpful um, beliefs or, or let's say our unhelpful rules and assumptions about our life and the unhelpful behaviors that stem from that usually reinforces our negative core beliefs and the negative emotions we are experiencing because we cannot live up to those expectations. So I want to encourage you that if a low self-esteem is something that you do struggle with, I really want you to go and consider, okay, but what is it that I, I really believe about myself? Um, how do I describe myself? I am this, 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 this. I am a failure. I am unattractive. I am um, not good enough. Go and explore those things and really consider, but where did they come from? Where did they stem from and what is keeping them alive? Are there any rules and assumptions that I've set up for my life that are keeping them alive? And I think the most important thing here to know and to start addressing them is to go to those negative core beliefs and start challenging them. Because just because they are there and just because they're in our self-talk and in our thoughts, that does not mean that they are truth. It just means that we've started believing them and they've become ingrained into our minds. So it's going to take some work to break them down. So it's going to take replacing the lies with the truth. Now, what is the truth about yourself? What are the positive qualities about yourself? What is it that other people um, say to you about you as a person, not necessarily your achievements or your money or your status um, or the way you look or anything like that, but who you truly are as a person? Um, and to go and whenever those lies pop up, to go and actually identify them and replace them with truth. And... Brene Brown um, made a very good point when she said people who believe that they are worthy of love and belonging, that they have worth, that they have purpose, that they have value, actually believe that they are worthy of love and belonging. And they are able to be vulnerable with who they truly are and their struggles as well. And being vulnerable is showing who we are, but knowing that you know what, I might be accepted or I might be rejected. But if I don't, if I'm not vulnerable, then I'm just going to isolate myself for fear of rejection and I won't be able to connect. I won't be able to form relationships. I won't be able to grow. Um, so obviously you're going to be vulnerable with, thing, with people that you, you trust, not just with anybody on the street, but um, vulnerability really is a key to having other people ha put input into your life as well. Um, and I think self-compassion is also a really important part here. And self-compassion isn't, you know, letting yourself off the hook if you've done something wrong if you, or if you behaved in a way that um, wasn't right. Um, but it's actually acknowledging, okay, um, this, is, this is what happened. Maybe I made a mistake here or maybe I felt bad about myself in this situation. Why is that? And what can I learn from that? How can I address this? Um, and how can I improve from, from the situation? Because people are often so scared to make um, mistakes or fail, but failures and mistakes are actually, it's part of life. Everybody goes through that and it's sort of like a prerequisite to learning and to growing. So vulnerability, self-compassion, um, and believing that you are worthy of love and belonging and that you have worth, purpose and you are, have value. Um, <clears throat> and um, we can know that we are worthy of love and belonging because God says in his word that we are secure, um, we are significant and that we have value because we are loved and he has given us purpose. So we can truly rest in that and know that we don't have to rely on what the world tells us is going to make us good enough, but that we can rely on what God says about us makes us good enough. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you reflect on your self-esteem and I hope that you can challenge those lies and replace them with truth. Bye.